that's the only thing we ever know. He never told us anything, no stories, nothing. All we had was his tears. <laughs> um, but it's a story of survival. He has grandkids, great grandkids, things like that. There was that war story. The commemoration of World War I is a powerful force in Australia. We see it in Anzac Day, in the various war memorials that exist in most corners of Australia and in popular culture. On Remembrance Day in 2017, 14 young teachers spent the day at the University of Sydney to experiment with process drama as a way to deepen understanding about war and commemoration. Using primary sources from the Beyond 1914 website, experts in drama and history guided these teachers on a journey into history. As these young teachers learnt, sources provide the bones of historical analysis and imagination unleashes new ways to think historically. To be a critical historian, um, the fact has its part to play, but it shouldn't dominate. A process drama is a pedagogical way to explore a particular concept or an idea. It's a way of using generally a pretext to use imaginative thinking to learn more about that particular concept. We've used imagination as the principal tool for thinking about historical consciousness. We recognise that historical knowledge can be acquired in multiple ways. And so we've used dramatic interaction and imagination and dramatic thinking to really develop a personal relationship with this very significant member of our community. We wanted to get people away from the idea of it's all just about memorising dates and facts and battles. There is so much more. One of the things that has come out of research on how people learn history is that we really need to tap into their prior knowledge. Everyone will walk in to your classroom with some idea of war. So when we designed this process drama, one of those things was to tap into those prior understandings of the participants. So we're going to actually ruminate over some questions. Lots of us have stories in our families and communities about war. Some of us are refugees. Some of us are people who have lived in war-torn countries. Some of us, war is quite a close experience. And I would like you to very briefly, just for a couple of minutes, share with each other a story that you might know about war. The only point of reference I have for that period is just the way, you know, the women were. The women were very strong. We then use their responses to bring people together and find commonalities, universalities, as well as differences. One of the challenges that we face is how do we make that way of thinking that historians have accessible to students from kindergarten through to year 12. We pose questions of our participants. What are the key concerns they have about teaching children about war? Why are we teaching about commemoration in Australia or Anzac Day? Why is it important for our students in our classrooms to know about these key events? So the gallery walk, there's, there's quite a few different reasons for the gallery walk. It's a safe way for individuals to contribute their ideas. It's anonymous, so they are writing on a post-it note. So you can take risks. There's no right answer or wrong answer. It's about getting ideas on paper and everyone is contributing their ideas or their questions or concerns. And then what we do is we um, provide the space and the time for the participants to go and view the gallery, like in an art gallery, and to take in what other people have um, suggested. It's a way of sharing ideas and knowledge, but it's also a way of igniting new questions. As someone's reading an original source, they're thinking of questions, they're noting down certain elements that, um, you know, aspects of history that they're finding in that source. 
but they want to also use it to critically evaluate history. You know, there are these other people who have written about it and to use both that as well as original sources is how you wouldn't ordinarily expect even a baby historian to go forward into the world of history. It's not so much about facts and details at this point, it's really about framing the whole story. The activity with the war record allowed the students to take away some facts, but also then to go deeper, to look at the concepts there. And we allocated the students with one word from the source, embarkation, decorations, medicine, and service. So a tableau or a freeze frame. So Alison had the students working in small groups to form a freeze frame based on that word, that they were going to enact that word. So if it was um, service, then their tableau had to reflect the word, helping students contextualise these big ideas. People are concerned about how they teach the history of war. I would advise them to be original source led, so to be led by the original sources, particularly in the classrooms. If they go to the original sources, like personal letters or journals, they can immediately hear the voices of the past. One of the steps in the historical inquiry process is source analysis. That's when a historian finds a letter or a war record or a photograph. She possessed, however, a diligent approach to work. Something that was around at the time. We used a letter from Elsie back to her professor back at the University of Sydney. And we structured the learning experience to allow the students to, first of all, engage with that letter by just reading it. They then looked at um, some of the vocabulary that Elsie used in the letter. So for example, she uses a lot of scientific terms and that immediately stands out. And I think from that one source, there were so many rich things that the students took away. It also means they can start asking questions. So a historian's task is often read the resources and you come away with more questions than you began with. And it's those questions that we really want um, people to ask if we're to construct and create and um, progress knowledge. And when we're teaching history, we need to use the language of the time. We need to use historical terminology. We need to use the vocabulary because if the students have the language, then that will lead to their conceptual understanding. Can you please look at this photo? in turns and I'd like you to choose someone in that photo. Have a look at that photo, see if there's someone who's speaking to you particularly. So think about whose character you've got. Oh beautiful. And I would like you to actually speak to each other. Have a think about what you might say. You can say as much as you like or as little. I'd like you to come in here when you've had a chance to look at the letter that Elsie, my excellent, excellent, excellent student, wrote. There is a great deal of relapsing fever. I am very familiar with spirulum. And enteric we have always with us and have to differentiate diphtheria as a common complication in typhus and crops up in the wards constantly. Oh. You've got all that. As interns and medical students, you would know all that. Don't break any of my material. Off you go. I want you to have 20% glucose added. To participate in a process drama, you don't necessarily need very developed or highly nuanced literacy. 
But one of the activities that we do, which is writing and role, allows students particularly to assume a role based on the knowledge that they've um, developed and generated through participating in the process drama. So they have new language and new lexicon to um, impart when they're sitting down to write a letter. They also develop a very personal connection to the person that they're writing to and the role that they're inhabiting. So today we saw with the writing in role, the participants as teachers were able to actually think about, well, who would I be writing to? And I know now how significant her role was. What would have been her concerns? By the lamplight, we're going to write a letter. We're going to write a letter home as Elsie. And we're going to think about all those experiences that we know of and what we've learned about her. There's a lot of emotional connection um, that's built and developed and it really gives students particularly material to write very discursively and at length about something that they're increasingly becoming an expert at. Your homage to the memorial. So, you're being given a poppy of remembrance and you've also got a beautiful piece of rosemary which we associate with um, days of commemoration and remembrance. You might like to come and stand somewhere near the memorial and recite your word and place your poppy of remembrance at the memorial. The real accessibility of this particular pedagogic opportunity is the truly multidisciplinary dimensions to it. So working together where teacher artists, where history experts, where curators. Coming together to develop a really new pedagogic tool that teachers can use to give students a new way to generate knowledge. And we're very hopeful that teachers will use some or perhaps all of these activities to actually be able to engage with something very meaningful and historic.